Hello and Happy New Year. I'm Dr. Ruth Roberts, your pet's ally. I hope that you are all well, that the holidays were uh, quiet and calm and peaceful for you. So let's jump straight into some questions. And again, Happy New Year. Hopefully this is, yeah, there it popped back up. So Miriam, thank you much from, uh, from Mercy and Susie and you. Hopefully this will... Uh, all be good. I'm in a new place, so we'll figure out how the internet does for us today. So let's see. Um, Wendy is asking about the links for the YouTube videos. So, uh, Wendy, one of the benefits of your uh, Crockpet membership is that Hannah is also posting uh, these videos in the the members area on the website drruthroberts.com. And you, because these are in YouTube, um, if you hit the link, it, it gets a little sketchy because Facebook and YouTube don't play so well. But if you hit the link in uh, Facebook, that should take you over to YouTube where you can see it. And then you should see the, the comments there. But perhaps more easily is to go into the members area and then uh, simply click on the day that, uh, that you're looking for information on there should also be a transcript in there so hopefully that is helpful um, Karen uh, had a question about her oster roasting pan dying and I've had that ex experience too you come home to a cold pan of raw food so uh, Instapot people use and love um, and then you can actually do like Angela said and throw that into the um, into the oven and cook like that or frankly just get um, the commercial hotel pans those are super useful too that's how we used to do it um, but yeah I mean if you've got a small pet and you don't need to make a ton of food um, then Instapot's great and again you can throw it into the oven as well although if you're trying to get this done while you're at work the Instapot's probably a better bet so happy new year to you Karen and um, Aaron, congratulations on Rosie. Hopefully everything is going well for her. Um, and then you, it totally, I think you're trying to transition onto uh, crock cooked food from the, um, eighth of, from the dry food. So mixing it in is absolutely appropriate. And it, it's so interesting when I look at these, um, results from Glacier Peak Holistic. So many pets, all of the grains are lit up, but what you can use are things like potatoes and um, sweet potatoes sometimes, although it looks like potatoes are not a good choice. And, um, but you can use these winter squashes, which are a little bit more um, suitable. Yeah, YouTube glitchy. Thanks, Leona. Uh, let me see if I can move inside and make this a little bit better. Let's see here. Um, so let's just walk inside. So, uh, and hopefully this won't make it even more glitchy, but we'll see. So let's see here. Um, but that's really pretty interesting. And then um, you can use a few other things like peas and uh, lentils and things of that nature for um, for a carbohydrate source and it looks like that would be pretty fine so that's great so hopefully that is helpful and congratulations and welcome and I hope that uh, Rosie enjoys the food I'm sure she will good to see you Erin let's see and then Jamie's asking about a raw freeze-dried or what have you as a backup um, yeah, and canned, I agree, is, is great in a pinch, but not uh, a great idea. Now, the, if, if this raw has spearmint in it, if they eat it, that's okay. It's a little bit more of a cooling herb, so that would be okay. Um, Soho's, see how it is. I've, I think, I, I, and I can't remember now if it was Honest Kitchen or Sojo's, that people had... Um, issues with it coming out sort of unprocessed. So let us know how that goes, Jamie, but you know, backup is always good. And, and um, yeah, and in the LA area, 
the deal is um, with Just Food for Dogs is that it is there, but it is also extremely high in carbohydrates. So you're back to that 60 to 70% carbohydrates. So that get, gets it into a little better, a uh, little bit more like a commercial food. So Leona is the, um, is the uh, s streaming a little bit better now, hopefully. Um, let's see. And... Denise, I think that you, your, your pets had um, issues with their kidneys, if I'm remembering this correctly. And if that is the case, I would not go to dried raw food 100% because what has kind of fixed things for you is the moisture in the, um, in the food itself. And I know it can be a pain keeping it cooked and things like things of that nature. But, um, but yeah, we, I mean, we travel nonstop too. And, uh, although we're going to be here for about four, four more months, which is kind of nice, but I would suggest, um, you know, going slowly with that because likely what's going to happen is as there is less moisture in the diet, then there will, then the kidney values will pop back up. So kind of go slowly with that. Uh, let's see. And Carol added accidentally more turmeric, dry mustard, calcium. And Carol, for one batch, this is okay. The, the thing is, is that the turmeric and dry mustard can be a little off-putting as far as the taste goes. So if you find they're not eating it, then what I would do is just make another batch and mi mix them together. Um, and then that will get them pretty close to diluted out. Um, and then again, the calcium for one batch at that higher dose is not a big deal. Uh, and it sh you should be perfectly okay, Carol. Um, so just, you know, less time, next time it's, you know, you'll remember. Good. Thanks, Leona. Um, let's see. And then Leah's asking about have her Bichon that had surgery for a ruptured gallbladder. Um, Yes, you can continue making his food. And what I would do is, since he no longer has a gallbladder, is to see about using, do two things. One is to go come back in a little bit lower fat. So instead of six tablespoons of fat per batch, then what I would do is start with three. And then um, you can also get some bile salts uh, and add those in to help help kind of process the fat a little bit better. And hopefully you the, the biopsy comes back as benign. Um, sounds like things were a little unhappy in there for a while. And a uh, ruptured gallbladder is not fun, so hopefully everything is still going, going well. Uh, so Leah, just let us know how that goes. Um, again, we're, get, we're getting you guys set up and I'm going to complete this today, but the, um, you should have access to a good number of supplements in, uh, the, oh golly, what is the name of that thing? Um, full script. So I'll get that set up for you today and, um, I'll, I'll see if I can dig up a, um, a, uh, supplement that might be appropriate, but that will help kind of digest the fats a little bit better. You can also get something that is um, uh, like lipase. That's, a, that's the enzyme that digests fats in specific. So, and Daniel's asking, if you modify the recipes from the book, how can you calculate how many calories per cup? Calories are the same for dogs and humans for certain. So, Daniel, I would encourage you not to really um, modify the recipes without assistance because what tends to happen is that that creates imbalance in the recipes and uh, that can really create some issues. So, if you need a lower fat diet, essentially for every tablespoon of uh, fat that you take out, that's about 100, 120 calories, then you would need to add that back in in carbohydrates. So then you'll have to look at 
you know, rice and things of that nature. I think one cup of cooked rice is 220 calories, so that should help. But we need to keep keep the calorie distribution about the same. So, you know, it, t post in here what you're trying to do, but I would encourage you not to modify the recipe too much so that you don't end up with an imbalance in nutrients. And yes, Debbie, that is Mona. That's uh, a long time ago, uh, and that's on our old dock in John's Island. So she was gazing out into the sunset. We thought it was a really pretty picture. So that's what I have for you this week. Um, hope that you are all well, and thanks again for your questions and your support.